Okay, welcome to this exciting video on the Sonichai Mantel Dubrow theorem. So, what is this? So, this is a result due to a series of developments due to Hugo Sonnenschein in 1973, uh, Rolf Mantel in 1974 and 1976, and Gerard Dubrow in 1974 when they were all simultaneously inspecting the properties of the excess demand function denoted by Z as a function of P, which is a price vector. Um, the question is, can any arbitrary function Z, which satisfies continuity, homogeneity, and Walrus's law be an excess demand function for an economy? And the answer is yes. Uh, practically speaking, uh, what this means is that you don't need much to prove equilibrium existence or demand much from our environment for there to be one. So this is the Sonnenschein Mantel Dubrow theorem, a la MWG, right? Mass Cole, Winston and Green, that's the book that I'm taking this from. Uh, suppose that Z of P is a continuous function defined on the domain as follows, right? Which is P epsilon, where the price ratio between any two goods is greater than or equal to epsilon for any two i and j with the values in uh, real number space RL. Assume that in addition, that Z of P is homogeneous of degree zero and satisfies Walrus's law. That means that if we multiply P times uh, Z of P, right, that's going to be equal to zero. Then there exists an economy of L consumers whose aggregate excess demand function coincides with Z of P in the domain P epsilon. Practically speaking, this means that even if we have the silliest looking demand functions, if the corresponding Z of P satisfies a few conditions, then an equilibrium goes and exists. That being, uh, you know, homogeneous of degree zero continuity and Walrus's law. So the proof here is a little bit different from uh, why it's seen in the book. And this is just generalizing to n dimensions. It's pretty simple. Um, from continuity and homogeneous of degree zero, this implies that there exists some uh, real vector R, right, greater than zero, such that the absolute value of our excess demands is going to be less than R for every price vector P in this P epsilon space, right? That being defined as that any two prices, right, is going to be greater than or equal to epsilon. Um, define the excess demand function of individual I in market L as follows, right? So we're going and saying that there are um, N consumers here. So here, this is going to be this individual's market uh, demand, right? And he's going to share a fraction of that excess demand plus his own unique excess demand, uh, you know, parameter, right? Which is over here. Um, let's just go and circle that right here. And that's going to be where this RI is going to be a real number, right? It could be really any real number, positive or negative, but the sum of all these RIs are equal to zero. We're also gonna go and define another property that the sum of all of these uh, individuals or some all these uh, commodities L, right? They're gonna go and be equal to Z of L here. And once we sum over all individuals and all commodities, we get our vector, which is right here. That is um, going to be our excess demand function for all individuals and all commodities. So from here, we're gonna choose a endowment which is strictly greater than zero, such that for each individual, his endowment plus his unique excess demand function for that specific commodity, right, is going to be greater than e than zero. So what this, what we have here, right, uh, this is a generic demand function, right, as in it's your endowment, but it's shifted by your excess demand function there, right, and that's going to be for every p in epsilon. Now, the next part of this proof is a little bit tricky. Um, we note that this Z of P function is continuous, right? So we can go and have a continuous path here, right? Noted by this picture. So we're gonna first do this by characterizing a offer curve, right? That's what we have here. So that's just going to be our omega I, which is our initial endowment uh, for consumer I, plus his excess demand function, right? for every uh, P in P epsilon, right? Now, as we change, right, our price vector, right? This is illustrated in our too good example. Our offer curve is going to rotate. So what we have here first is that we have our initial endowment, right? And since we have our initial endowments, we have also an excess demand function. So this is going to get pushed up, you know, for the sake of argument 
to some location here, right? It could go down here, but it's going to get pushed up or scaled up in uh, some direction. Now, what we're going to do is that we're going to go and say that this relationship holds for every P, right? And we see that it will clear because of this excess demand functions uh, going and, you know, summing up to zero and Walters' law uh, being present there. So what this goes and says, right, just down here, I know I deviated from the script here, is that we can fit any map due to this Z of I as a function of P, right, as our price vector here, right? This is, you know, really, you know, mind blowing here because no matter what, you know, Z of I is here, right? We will be able to go and get a map for every P here. We'll be able to go get an equilibrium here. So this is uh, just, you know, a last slide for uh, you weirdos that are out there. Um, um, the reason why I'm going and saying that is because this is, you know, a big thing that uh, people seem to obsess about, at least from what I see on the internet, um, though I guess the internet is not, uh, you know, the best place to go and say things, but some people go and think that this, this theorem demonstrates the futility of equilibrium driven economics. Like this is, uh, you know, what those uh, Steve Keen types and those heterodox types out there uh, are going and being into. However, a more mature and a correct outlook on this is that this motivates the need for equilibrium refinement, right? And this is a principal work for most theorists in economics, right? This is what people go and work on. The main takeaway, uh, you know, just for, you know, regular people, like me and you, I mean, it could be that you're a theorist and you're going and watching this, um, but I, I doubt that. Um, the takeaway here is that just because you have an equilibrium concept doesn't mean it's useful. You have to have something that is refined here, right? It's very easy to demonstrate equilibrium, right? But the question is, how can we go and refine that equilibrium? Because when we think about equilibrium, it's really about a space and a continuous function and we have an equilibrium. That's what we've been doing in the past three videos, right? We've been just going and abusing Brouwer's fixed point theorem and the properties of our excess demand function. That's it. But in order to go and generate something meaningful, like that this equilibrium goes and means something, we have to go and have this refinement. And this is what people work on in modern economics these days. So um, I hope you liked this video. Uh, I hope you found it useful. Um, I hope it explains some things. Uh, to you. Uh, and if you have any comments, like this video, hate this video, leave them in the comments below. Take care.